Welcome to the Highland Report, uh, Bjorn Nystad. You are a doctor in Russian history and an author, and um, you facilitate and host the independent uh, Russian Information Center in Norway. Uh, it's very interesting to talk to you because we want to address the issue of Russia and the way Russia is perceived in the West. Uh, interestingly enough, we've seen how in the American media nowadays um, it's been peculiar. Whatever goes wrong in the US, this is almost to the comical side, whatever goes wrong internally, externally, uh, interior ministry, whatever, it's always the Russians' fault. Um, maybe this is done partly because the West uh, has deep problems and we need to have an outer enemy and it's convenient to return to the Cold War rhetoric. Uh, maybe it's also done because Russia has grown in strength and maybe it's also done uh, because uh, we have different worldviews. There are many reasons for this, but the, um, it seems to be very strange that there's such a one-sided I would say complete uh, demonization of Russia, although so many positive things also happen in the Russian segment. It's strange because we seem to, in the Western media, portray Russia as evil and portray our own governments or whatever happens in the West as the good. Uh, this is a kind of childish uh, caricature that we find strange because the world is very pluralistic. And this is why it's interesting to talk to you precisely because you head the Norwegian Russian Center for Information, an independent agency. Why do you think there's such a great demonization of Russia? I, I think you have already um, said um, what needs to be, to, to be said, that um, there are big problems in Western society today. People, ordinary people, do no longer trust the globalistic elites. European integration doesn't work. We have problems with our economy. We have problems with immigrants. We have lots of problems. And in such a situation, it's very important for uh, the establishment to have an uh, in, uh, um, enemy, uh, a foreign en enemy, and uh, to, to, to um, create uh, unity in, in their own societies. I, I think that's the reason why we have this uh, demonization of uh, Russia. It seems that we remain in the rhetoric of the Cold War, although there's been such dramatic changes. Uh, Russia is no longer the Soviet Union. Uh, this large multi-ethnic state has gone from being an atheist uh, uh, state to actually returning to the Russian Orthodox Christianity. Now over 70% of the Russian people belong to, 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 to Christianity. Um, you have stated that that you are a stern supporter of uh, President Vladimir Putin. This is such a radical thing to say in the West, although all around the world, otherwise in the Middle East and Africa and South America, people instantly agree with you and in Asia as well. But here in the West, that seems to be such a radical thing to say. Why are you a supporter of Vladimir Putin? I, I support him because I think that he saved uh, the Russian uh, nation. Uh, the, the Russian state, when he came to power in the year 2000, the, uh, the Russian uh, state uh, had disintegrated, uh, the economy w w wasn't working, uh, oligarchs had uh, taken all the, the wealth the ordinary people had uh, created, there was a uh, war in Chechnya, uh, Russia had no uh, foreign I influence, and w w within a few years, uh, Putin uh, managed to uh, recreate a strong Russian state. He, he was able to uh, put down the rebellion in, in Chechnya. He um, took uh, power and uh, money back from the oligarchs. He, he did the, what, what had to be done to save um, the, the Russian state and the, the Russian people. And 
uh, no doubt he is a great um, uh, state leader and w w one one could compare him to um, persons like uh, Winston Churchill or uh, Charles de Gaulle or Konrad Adenauer but uh, I think in 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 the west um, the, the the elites think it's better to have a weak uh, uh, Russia uh, that they can uh, just uh, exploit, take all the natural resources, oil, gas, and so, so on. And uh, Yeltsin was, was such a weak uh, leader, and uh, foreigners did everything they, they wanted to do. And uh, of course, the, the West hopes to uh, get a new Yeltsin, a new weak leader. And uh, for that reason, they try to uh, stage some kind of color revolution or putsch or what, what, whatever in uh, Russia, uh, like they did in Ukraine. It's, it, it's quite um, a statement, really, when you look at the Western media and its involvement, uh, basically, from being a much more freer and critical um, uh, establishment uh, a number of years back to now uh, basically being an echo chamber. Of course, that's a popular word these days, but uh, reflecting uh, somehow a propaganda that uh, worries a lot of uh, us who are intellectual elites, maybe on the alternative side, because we see only one uh, view, world view, one side of um, a biased view on, on issues, all as I stated earlier, divided between who is to consider to be good or evil. And this reminds us of Germany in the 1930s, and, and this is precisely the type of development we do not wish to have. But the famous linguist and, and the most cited um, um, scholar in, in history in the, within the humanities, uh, Dr. Noam Chomsky, he has spoken openly about the need precisely in democracies uh, for the elites and the political elites and economical elites precisely to have the control over the population and thereby need to have the control over the media since it's precisely in democracies that people go to the voting ranks and vote their political leaders. You would need to have that kind of control really in a, in a dictatorship because there, I mean, the leader does whatever he wants anyway. And, but but so, so, so I think that point is quite valid and I think somebody uh, has, has decided to take control over the media, and this is important for Westerners to know, that when they read in the media, uh, the American media, for example, nine, over 90% of the American media is owned by less than, is owned by six corporations, and they're all in each other's boards and everything. I mean, there's, there's this elite, uh, economical elite, really, and, and Noam Chomsky has also stated that it's a problem, he, he states, actually, that the U.S. is no longer a democracy. Uh, due to the fact that the, uh, the, you know, the power structure is kept within the hands of the very few. The Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S. is privately owned. It's not owned by the American state. So there, there's so many things that has happened the past years that, that, or the, uh, that many say that, 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 that democracy itself has been hijacked in the West. While when we look to Russia, we see Christianity growing in Russia, traditionalist um, uh, values growing in Russia, and a realism that I would say characterizes Putin. Yes, I, I, I think you're quite right. And I would say that there is more democracy in, in Russia today than, than we have in the, the, in the West. And I, I think uh, in Russia and uh, in the West, there, there are two different uh, concepts of uh, d democracy. I think the Russian concept is the right one. It is that the majority of the people should decide by, by, by voting. And it's not, no doubt that Putin is, and the Russian elite is supported by 70-80% of the Russian population. You have opinion polls and so on. And everything that they do, it's actually supported by, by, by the people. And I, I would say that uh, that is a true democracy. In, in, in the West, we learn that democracy, it's not a majority rule. It is that we respect uh, uh, various uh, minorities, uh, I would call them pressure groups. 
And, and the, the result is that it's very hard for, for ordinary people, uh, who I think in every society is the great majority, to realize the, their interest by, by voting in, in Western societies. I think by, in our societies, uh, voting means uh, next to nothing. Uh, a few years ago, we had a green socialist uh, government. Now we are, are, are said to have a very conservative, almost reactionary government. But, but, but I think to, to ordinary people, nothing has changed uh, by, 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 the, by the change of uh, government. So I, I, I would say that we have a very uh, corrupt uh, kind of a uh, government. And I, I, I think ordinary people, in, not just in uh, Norway, but in uh, most Western countries, would, would like the kind of leaders uh, they have in uh, Russia and the, the kind of democracy, a, a democracy which, which means rule of the people, rule of the majority. But, uh, and uh, I think the election of Trump, uh, Brexit, uh, shows that uh, very when. But, but, but of course, the uh, globalist uh, elites, they, they very much uh, fear this. And th th that is the reason why Putin is uh, demonized, why Trump is demonized, why uh, Marine Le Pen is uh, demonized. Uh, they, they very, very much fear that uh, um, someday ordinary people will j just riot against the system. And I, I think ordinary people have started to, to rebel. For, for example, people no longer trust the uh, mass media. And the, and the elites uh, try to, to force people uh, to uh, watch state television. For example, in Norway, soon we, we will all be forced to pay for state television, even if we do not have a television set. If you have an address, you, you will be forced to uh, pay for government uh, television. So it's, uh, I would say this is worse than uh, what, uh, what it was in the uh, Soviet Union in the Brezhnev's times. We, we have a much more totalitarian uh, society and, and the, the suppression of uh, opposition independence vote is much stronger in, in, in the West. Of course, because it's a, a more intelligent, more efficient uh, suppression of uh, uh, different views than, than it was in the Soviet Union. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the EU because precisely uh, this has been at the heart of the issues within the EU as well. We've seen the tendency in the West, um, uh, both in the US and also in Europe, uh, of a growing distance between the political and economical elite. They seem to have their own agenda. Um, and the people, the interests of the people. Uh, we know now Oxfam uh, has stated that 62 persons in the world, individuals, I think a few more, but um, however you look at it, own approximately half of world assets, considering also the very few owning the media and, and looking at the, the, one may say, regressive, I would say highly intolerant um, political elites in the EU, for example. We have such crises in, in, in so many nations in, in Europe, and they seem to do nothing. And this is the precise point of Marine Le Pen in, and the National Front in, 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 in France. Uh, I regularly post on the Herland Report her whole interviews with uh, different people, because I see that in the media, in the regular mainstream media, European media, she's chronically portrayed as an extremist, right-wing, and then populist, and as though she's almost half crazy. This is not the French people and the people itself. There's such a murmur. And I do support political revolutions in, in Europe. I do think we need to remove uh, some of the political establishment that currently resides. And this is also in, in Europe because they are incapable of handling the issues that face the European nations. For example, um, issues of, of, of the, 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 you know, I mean, for, let me state what Marine Le Pen said says she wants to return to some of the nation state, you know, to have the control over the borders. She clearly states that there needs to be reform within the EU. If there is no reform within the EU, then France needs to take control over its own borders. France, frankly, is on the border of, of civil war. We don't hear about it in the mainstream media because they don't speak about it. There's like hundreds of riots, bombing of cars and, and killing of policemen happening all the time in France. 
violence, but our report, we don't hear it in our media. So, so the issues that come forth, uh, and, and for example, let me just state, I mean, populism is portrayed as some horrible thing that is like, the definition of populism is a politician who does what the people want uh, the politicians to do. So this is how far we've come from a true democratic system in, in, in the e, within the EU that it has become a cuss word to be a politician who wants to do as the people, what the people wishes uh, to have done. We haven't recovered properly from the financial crisis in 2008. There's just such a number and, you know, so you, you see again the rhetoric as, as, as some are labeled with such horrible words and what they actually say is, is not that bad. When you look at Macron, for example, his politics is, is much more right wing uh, than, than, than hers in a way, although this is underneath yeah. you. Don't see that clearly. Yes, that's uh, interesting. I, I, I think uh, the French uh, presidential election is almost a copy of the Russian uh, presidential election in uh, 1996. Um, you know that uh, Yeltsin and uh, his uh, elite, they had just uh, ruined Russia. People uh, were actually starving. And uh, most people uh, thought that uh, the communist leader, uh, Gennady Shugano, that he, he would be elected president and all the uh, opinion polls showed that he would be uh, elected. But then, uh, and, and the, the elites, and not just the uh, Russian elite, but uh, the, the Western elites uh, as well, uh, really panicked. And, they um, started a, a, a massive com campaign to demonize uh, Shugano and uh, the communists, and they depicted him as a new Stalin and, 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 and so on. And uh, all uh, the mass media uh, supported Yeltsin and demonized uh, Shugano. And Yeltsin was um, um, depicted as, as a new Yeltsin. This was not the Yeltsin who had ruined the, the people. This was a new Yeltsin who, who cared about uh, ordinary people. And, and we, we see exactly the, the, the same in, in France. People no longer trust the political uh, elite. And I, I think most uh, Frenchmen, they, they, they really support what uh, Marine Le Pen says. It's in a way extremism. But uh, the elite, uh, it's a real threat to them, so they demonize uh, her, just uh, like they demonized uh, Shugano, and uh, he was depicted as a new Stalin, she's been depicted as a new Hitler, and um, all the mass media uh, is part of this uh, demonization ca campaign, and just like uh, uh, Yeltsin, uh, this Macron, he's the, depicted as a new Macron, he's not the former uh, finance minister, he's not the, for, the globalist, the, the billionaire, the man who worked for, for the bankers, it's, uh, no, it's uh, represented, depicted as a representative of ordinary people, and new Macron and so on. So it, 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 it's, it's all the same. So I, 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 I fear that Le Pen presumably will not be elected, but I hope that she will get at least 40% of the, um, the, the, the votes, because I, I think that may start a change, not just in, in France, but in, in all over Europe. And obviously, to solve Europe's uh, problems, we must uh, recreate uh, the, the national state and we, we must uh, put an end to the European Union. I, I think that uh, Europe, the European Union is the cause of most of our problems. It's quite interesting to look at the euro as well, because I mean, the effect of the euro has quite frankly been that uh, Germany now is the strongest state. Um, in, in Europe and the profits really from the southern states have, have gone into the pockets of the German bankers. So, so and, and, and it's, um, uh, Germany is a wonderful country, so I'm not saying, and uh, with a wonderful work ethic and, and, and a good morale. So, so it's not that, but uh, the euro has nonetheless uh, furthered the process of, within the globalization that we see that the fewer, I mean, the longer we um, uh, enter into the globalization, the more we see that the few get even richer and the poor get even poorer. And that's not what we were told when the globalists first started because there were socialists and all kinds of people saying that. Now the Indians 
would get all the good payments mm. and it would be like an equa equalization of payments and all that. And, and we've seen that has not happened. Um, then yet again, let me address also maybe one of the reasons why Russia is demonized so much. Uh, I noticed that President Vladimir Putin is very clear on, on the respect uh, for national sovereignty and borders and international law. And we've seen how the United States in a number of years, uh, maybe especially after the fall of the Berlin War in, 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 Wall in 1989, uh, have voiced kind of like an end of, this is the end of history, Western liberal dem, uh, hedonistic democracy has won the day, we're going to implement democ Western democracy in all kinds of countries. And we've seen the stickers. I mean, if you don't want Western democracy, you'll get the bombs. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like bombing, this humanitarian bombing and all this we saw to a horrifying degree in the Libya war. I've been very engaged in the in, in those issues, warning against it since the beginning. Um, there seems to be a, a realism uh, and, 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 and a trust in the nation state and a respect for uh, the nation state that we see in Russia. Maybe this is one of the reasons why uh, Russia also is demonized. Do you agree with me? Yes, of, of, of course. But I, I hope that we will see a more, uh, more respect for the national state, not, not just in uh, Russia, but also in Western countries. And, uh, and fortunately, I, I think this is happening. I, I think uh, the election of Trump was, was uh, a clear signal. And uh, Brexit was uh, another signal. And uh, ordinary people do no longer uh, trust the uh, elites. They no longer trust uh, ma ma mass media. So I, I think we will get more people like Putin, uh, Le Pen, Trump, who uh, defend uh, national interests. And I, I think that's uh, very uh, positive. And I, I, and I agree with you. We, we should, of course, we should not uh, demonize ordinary Germans or ordinary Am Americans. I, I, I think Americans, uh, Germans, I, I think all people are, are victims of globalization. And uh, there are just a few individuals who benefit from uh, globalization. So the, the fight of, uh, against globalization and for the uh, recreation of the national state, it, 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 I think this is uh, true in internationalism. Uh, I also see it with uh, the Herland report and the interest. Um, it's an alternative Scandinavian site, of course, reaching millions. And I have millions in on this page, reading articles and, and following uh, uh, the matters. Uh, I have American professors and professors from all over the world who post their um, uh, repost their, their, their articles there. And we have an active debate on the alternative side. And, 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 and I think that there is, uh, there seems to be, I see my Facebook pages, I mean, it's exploding with thousands and thousands of comments of people, uh, thousands of likes. So it seems to touch um, some of the discontentment within, for example, the Norwegian people, the Scandinavian people as well, and also Europeans in general, as one is uh, irritated, frankly, uh, or let me rephrase myself, furious over the fact that we have such a one-sided media and biased media, which seems to go so well hand in hand with the power structures. And it annoys us because it's like, like we're nulled. I mean, we're, we're um, you know, I mean, the, the, the people are, are called by, by names. The people doesn't count anymore. And it's all elite structures. So this was the situation before the French Revolution as well. And, 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 and uh, it, it's a difficult situation. Uh, at this point, because we're, we're, we're seeing discontentment all over the Western world and irritation over, for example, the complete uh, uh, demonization of, of a country such as Russia. Let's at least, I mean, there's a lot of things that don't work in Russia. Uh, domestically, for example, uh, there's uh, issues with corruption, everybody knows that. There's issues with, you know, the, the veterans and, and, and the number of things that could be addressed uh, that are not working properly in Russia, but let's at least hear the plus and the minuses instead of only the demonization as though we were children and were, were, were watching a cartoon uh, depicting uh, something from, from, from Walt Disney. That's, that, that, I think that's a, a major uh, fu fury within the European people, that we live under censorship. Yes, I, I think uh, today this situation is like it was maybe a hundred years ago. When the labor movement uh, started to rebel against the capitalist system, 
at, at that time, all the mass media were owned by the uh, capitalists. Uh, uh, all the, the, the elite supported the capitalists, professors and scholars and so on. And so the, the labor movement had to create their own newspapers um, and tell people not to uh, pay for the bourgeois newspapers who were lying to them and start uh, buying socialist newspapers. And, and they had to create their own uh, kind of a counter elite. And uh, and this is what, what uh, ordinary people will have to do today. They will have to create their own uh, mass media li like you are doing. And um, they must uh, try to uh, create a, a kind of counter elite. And uh, I, I think there are, this is possible because there are quite a lot of people who are opposed to what, what, what's happening. And perhaps they feel that they are suppressed. And, uh, uh, no, I think today th this is easier to do b b because we have internet and uh, new possibilities to, to communicate and uh, to publish online and so on. I, I think you're, you're correct in that. Also watching the social media, I remember 2003, um, in the American invasion into Iraq, not that many people in the West understood that much. And we all believed in the issues of weapons of mass destruction, which, which was basically, of course, a joke. So, 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 but then later on, as came, we came to the Afghanistan war, I mean, Afghanistan has been an issue in itself. I mean, the poppy growing and, and the growing of the uh, many seven, many Afghans say, controlled by the American uh, mafia of the poppy growing and the heroin production in um, Afghanistan has risen, I think it's around 90% of world production and exiting then through Ukraine, of course, re more recently and, and then uh, Kosovo before then and entering the uh, European and American market. So it's, it, it's an issue also on, on what really is behind the scenes and where then once we came to the Libya war. I do believe that the, the, the main parts of the public in the West, and mm. this is not known to many of those who live in the Middle East, they think that nobody heard their voice, they think mm. that nobody in the West uh, cared about them, they think that Libyans, for example, many think that there's no debate whatsoever in European countries over this, and they're shocked when you tell them that there's a, there's a large portion of the regular people who so uh, were against the Libya war, 70% well, of the American people state they do not mm -hmm. war, want any yes. more wars mm -hmm. in the Middle East, still there's a wars everywhere, so, so I think that... Um, there's something about uh, uh, also this international push now that comes from, stems from largely also, you may say, alternative news sites mm -hmm. uh, that, that inform to a much larger degree of what's, what's really going on in the world. So, so we welcome that. And uh, most of all, we welcome more justice in the world. That's actually the, the thing, international justice, which was a leftist uh, agenda at the old times, which the left doesn't pro uh, uh, follow anymore. We, we welcome a more a greater degree of international justice and we want to have a, a greater justice on an analysis and critical analysis also on Russia. So thank you very much uh, Bjorn Ista for, for coming and good luck with your independent uh, Russian uh, center of information uh, here in Scandinavia. Thank you. Thank you.